Hello and welcome. I'm Sam Califer, your host for Vision, the show where we talk all about the College of Arts and Sciences as well as its faculty and students. Today I'm joined by Dr. Angel Tanner, an associate professor from the Department of Physics and Astronomy. Thanks so much for being here. Oh, thank you very much. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to have you back on the show. Yeah. It's always great to hear what you're researching and as an astronomer and astrophysicist you spend your time studying space and trying to discover planets, mm -hmm. which is something that I think everyone is so interested in from a young age. So I was wondering if you know or remember like a moment from your childhood that just stands out to you where you're like, yeah, that's what I want to do when I grow up. Oh, wow. Um, uh, there were a lot of movies that, that came out. One of my favorite ones, believe, believe it or not, was uh, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Sure. Um, I really wanted there to be aliens. Mm -hmm. So, but whenever I was uh, in high school, all the way up to high school, we didn't even know about alien worlds. It wasn't until my later years of college that we started discovering them. So I, I'm very lucky that, uh, I wish I was like 20 years younger though, because mm -hmm. the stuff that we're doing right now is absolutely amazing. So yeah, back then with all those cool movies like Star Wars, Close Encounters, E.T., mm. I was influenced by all those. Yeah, that's so great. I mean, just, you know, in a household and you're seeing all of this great television and movies and it's just sparking that interest for yeah, you. Yeah, it really did for me. And, and that's great. And it's so interesting to hear that you stuck with it and went and got those degrees and now that's what you're doing. And we're so happy to have you here at State. Thanks. You get to bring that interest to everyone else here on campus. I hope so. And, and I, I think you do a great job of that. And, um, and one reason I wanted to have you on is because in April, so here in a couple weeks, there's mm -hmm. a solar eclipse going on. So could you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, so this is the second of our two great national solar eclipses. We had that one in 2017. Um, this one's kind of going in the other direction. It'll be on April 8th. Mm -hmm. um, in some parts of the country, it will be a total solar eclipse. And uh, that's very special because that's a very unique situation to get to see one of those. Mm -hmm. So if you have a chance, I highly recommend that you go and uh, try to see the total solar eclipse. I will be going to Arkansas to see it, mm -hmm. but we're going to have a lot going on here on campus as well. Right. Yeah. And we're in near totality here. I mean, like we are at yeah, we so. are at over ninety percent, like around ninety five percent totality. Mm -hmm. But it's still not the same as being in totality. Right. Right. It's a huge difference. But it's so cool that it's on this side of the country. I mean, Arkansas is just a few hours away, and yeah. you can see that totality. And so, really exciting stuff going on. Mm -hmm. And something that I was thinking, you know, I've heard this statistic, I guess, that the only reason the solar, the total solar eclipse happened is because the moon is like perfectly the right size at the right distance from the earth to block out the sun the way it does. So does that mean like solar eclipse are pretty rare throughout the whole universe? Yeah, that's a very interesting question. So it is an interest, it is a coincidence that our moon and our sun are the same size on the sky. We are still trying to th discover the first exo moon. Mm. So we don't know what kind of moons exist around other planets. Sure. Um, we, we know that Jupiter's got a lot of moons and all the ice giants have a lot of moons, but uh, we're still trying to figure out if planets like the earth out there and other stars have moons and we have no clue. Sure. So I do, I do think it might be fairly unusual that we have this solar eclipse ability yeah. uh, here on our planet. That's something I was thinking about, you know, they only happen every 20 years or so on here on Earth and then even it's it's a super rare thing even to be here. And well, so the rarity comes from the fact that the Earth's the moon's orbit is actually tilted with respect to the Earth's orbit around the sun. Hmm. So there's that extra uh, aspect of it that makes them even more rare uh, on our planet. Right. So maybe there could be other planets that have solar eclipses every month. So yeah. I don't know. Uh, it could yeah. happen. But yeah. it's all these weird coincidental yeah. things yeah. that even make it happen. I think, yeah. you know, you people might take it for granted, but it's really a pretty phenomenal thing if you got into all the math of it. And so yeah, it is neat. just something that I was thinking about and, you know, maybe something that would encourage people to go see it. Oh, yeah. You should definitely catch it if you can. Yeah. And so, you know, um, I think your department and the, the university were holding a few different events to, you know, um, celebrate this important occurrence. So what are some events that are going to happen? Right, so on the day of, on April 8th, 
on the drill field. We'll be there, uh, they'll have some tents on the drill field and we will have, uh, be handing out eclipse glasses. We'll talk about that in a second. And we'll have a couple uh, solar telescopes um, and maybe even some entertainment. Uh, lots of fun things to do. It'll be around <clears throat> 1230 to three hmm. during, during the day. Um, yeah, so definitely come out and, and check that out. And then on April 3rd, we will have a public night event from five to seven over at Old Main, where my colleague, Dr. Donna Pierce, will give a lecture on uh, the phenomenon that is a solar eclipse. Sure, yeah. yeah. I think that's great, yeah, like right before it happens, there's a talk and you can learn all about it and then you can come here on campus and like you said, there'll be tables, music, chairs. I mean, it's gonna be a whole thing um, yeah. to get to experience it and, yeah. and you'll know more about it. So I think that's super great. And um, it'll be fun, but it's also important to do a solar eclipse the right way yeah. and have all the safety because yeah. I think this is something people hear about, but maybe they don't take it that seriously. The eye protection is super important during a solar eclipse. So could you talk about that? Why is it so important and what could happen if you're not being safe? Yeah, so I just remembered that I, I'm getting some interesting stuff off the internet from various places that are shutting down schools. Mm. So I did want to point out that on the one hand, the eclipse is not dangerous in terms of the sun. The sun's not going to be giving off any extra rays or it's perfectly safe to be outside. There's no danger. So if you're, you know, if you're in charge of the K through 12 schools, you know, you don't need to keep the kids inside or anything. There's no danger uh, from them just being exposed to being outside during the eclipse. No extra rays, no x-rays, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But what we need to pay attention to is don't look at the sun. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So when there's not a solar eclipse and you look at the sun, even if I look at these bright lights in here, the natural effect is for me to squint my eyes. Mm -hmm. When you look at the sun, your eyes, it automatically hurts and you, and you squint or you close your eyes because your brain has taught you not to let your eyes look at something that bright. Um, during a solar eclipse, a lot of that, even a 95% coverage, mm -hmm. you're not necessarily, it's going to look pretty bright still. You're going to have to sit there and stare at it before you actually see the crescent. Mm -hmm. But by then, you don't have as much light coming. Your brain doesn't quite register that you need to not do that. Mm -hmm. And by then you've already hurt your eyes. Right. So the problem with the eclipse is that you need to, if you do have any students or anybody go outside, they need to wear the eclipse glasses at all times. Definitely. Unless you happen to be, if you're in totality, you're going to know it because you're going to be surrounded by a bunch of other people mm. <laughs> who are probably there for totality. Right. So otherwise, here in Starkville, anywhere in Mississippi, uh, you need to wear those glasses. And it's perfectly safe to look at the eclipse if you're wearing the proper eyewear. Definitely. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've got some right here. Yes. Um, so the university... Uh, we're so excited about it. We've got these, you know, um, official safe glasses. We've got like 3,000 of them. We ordered 3,000. So yeah. come out on the drill field. We have some glasses for you. You can experience it in a safe way. Um, and there's a lot of counterfeits out there too. And yes. they're not all safe. Is that right? Yeah. So can I, can I see these yeah. now? Now we've already messed up these glasses. You see what you did? Mm. We did, we did that. We, we, we touched, we touched and put a fingerprint there. So that's a little bit, you know, well, that's probably fine, but you definitely want to inspect the glasses and make sure there's no holes in them. Um, if you want to use any from 2017, I've been hearing different, uh, advice about whether or not you want to do that. Like I would go ahead and take the glasses and put them up to a bright light, you know, and just kind of see if they're really blocking the light. And then one thing you look for with the, with the um, counterfeits is there's an, something called an ISO number in here. And if you have this special ISO number, uh, you should be fine. And we have links on our website, or if you email me, I can provide you. There's lots of web pages out there to tell you how to properly look at your glasses. But yeah, these are gonna be fine and, and it'll be good. And you can see when I'm looking through them, I can barely see any of these lights yes. in here. So yeah, those definitely work. You cannot good. see anything. And so we're excited we could get these for you know our university family. Um, and we want people to come out and get to experience it. And so 
Uh, yeah, I'm glad you could explain that. And we've got a few more minutes. So I just wanted to ask, is there any cool projects you're working on right now or anything like that? Oh my goodness. Um, well, I just got back from New Zealand. Mm -hmm. um, so that was, that was fun. That wasn't a project. So luckily scientists, academics, we get to go on these trips and these conferences. Um, so the reason I was in New Zealand was to talk about the telescope I'm putting on the moon. Huh? We've been working on that still. And then I've got another project that just got awarded uh, a lot of money from NASA huh? that I can't tell you about uh, yet. You're going to have to have me back uh, because the press release is going to be dropping very soon, probably sure. next week. But it's um, Mississippi State is uh, going to be part of a pretty impressive project with NASA. It's not going on the moon, mm -hmm. but um, it is, it's going to be something that's going to change the way we think about the universe. So that's be pretty awesome. cool. Yeah. What, what does the telescope on the moon do? Is it just so we get, we can see more stuff? Or? Yeah. So the telescope on the moon, that hasn't been quite funded yet, but we're spending all this money with the Artemis program to mm -hmm. send humans to the moon. Mm -hmm. So part of that, if you've been paying attention to space news, a lot of different countries have been sending landers to land on the moon. Mm -hmm. None of them have landed successfully okay. yet. The American one that just uh, went, it almost did it. It landed crooked. Mm. So apparently one of its legs broke because it landed a little hard. Okay. Um, so we're going to keep trying. Uh, a lot sure. of these are private companies, so we're doing it on the cheap. Mm -hmm. But uh, a par part of what NASA is allowing scientists to do is, hey, we're going to be launching all this stuff to the moon. Are there any scientific equipment that you want to put on a lander? Sure. So that's what we're trying to do. And so it'll be a telescope that will study all those alien worlds. Yeah. Um, we're trying to study the properties of the atmospheres of the alien worlds. Sure. And so the telescope will be able to collect data in the ultraviolet, mm. which we luckily can't do from the Earth because we have our beautiful atmosphere right. <laughs> that prevents us from getting really bad sunburns. Mm. So you got to go to the moon to study stuff in the ultraviolet sure. wavelengths. That is so, it's so interesting to just hear what you got going on. I mean, sending a telescope to the moon. I know, it always sounds fun. <laughs> yeah, it's so crazy, but it's awesome that you, you get to do that and hopefully we can get some more information you know, from that. Hopefully so. we can, yeah. We'll so, see. so great. Thank you so much for thank joining for me today. Me. Yeah. Great speaking with you. And thank you all for tuning in to this episode of Vision. We'll see you next time.